Let's start this show. It's the Randy Kagan Show. Welcome back to the Randy Kagan Show. If you don't like Randy Kagan, turn back now. This isn't the show for you. I was recently in Denver. We had 10 shows. I, uh, I sort of headline with Craig Ferguson. I just do it right before he goes on. So I headline first for 20 minutes, and then he goes on and then headlines. I'm doing the quote signals for actual hour and 10. All kidding aside, name of my third album. Uh, Craig likes the comedy works. That's where we go to workshop our new material. So he sold out 10 shows in a millisecond. Dude doesn't even have to do radio, get up early for any of that crap. It's, it's rarefied air. I really, truly feel blessed to be the comedy barnacle that I am, which is a good thing these days because, as we all have learned, that in the animal kingdom, the animal with the largest to penis-to-body ratio is the barnacle. So I'm very happy to be the comedy barnacle on Craig Ferguson. You heard me. Tell your friends. Suctioning onto him with my proportionally enormous wiener. This episode of the Randy Kagan Show brought to you by Yugoslavian Turbo Dirt. Our motto is, just because the earth's made of it doesn't mean you shouldn't buy some. Do the poo. You know, I uh, Wicca Chicka Googled uh, how many Bibles there are. There's a ton of Bibles. Because I was thinking about gay people and how religious folks are always pointing at the Bible saying it says, I don't know, in No Genitals chapter, Peeny Bump. I don't know, it says something about thou shall not touch thou schwinkter in some page of the Bible. I don't know, I haven't read it, not a lot of pictures. But I thought if gay people had their own Bible, like a Geibel, something they could refer to as validation. Like, are you serious? We have our own Bible, assholes. Are you serious? On the seventh day, God went shopping. I'm, he just crazy. Bear false witness, friend of mine. Remember the Sabbath gay? I just think this way they got a backup plan. They go, hey, look, Adam and Eve, Adam and Adam, right there. Adam and Adam's apple. And it would give a whole new meaning to thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Praise the Geibel. Hello, Elena Kagan's office. Oh, my God. Is this, this is Elena Kagan's office? Yes, it is, sir. How may I help you? I'm Randy Kagan, K-A-G-A-N. Is Elena home? Oh, what is, you know, I'm related to her. I'm, my last name is Kagan as well, K-A-G-A-N, so we're related. So if you could just leave a message for her that a close relative, hey, do you know if she can get me out of parking tickets? Can you? You know, sir, I don't think that you're actually on the list for this number. So I just got a couple of uh, things I got to deal with, custody and uh, and some parking tickets and that incident in, uh, you know, Barstow. I think that's what his name was. How do you spell Kagan, Elena Kagan? K-A-G-A-N. Yeah. That's mine as well. Is she a little, you know, does she like, uh, you know, she kind of, is she also a because I'm a Yeah, so Lena Kagan is Jewish. Okay, I'm sorry. I didn't know. Um, so did you report that? You know, um, no, I think I might have met, seen her at the Kagan gathering. So um, we used to go <clears throat> gefilte fishing together. If you guys are related, wouldn't she have given you her cell phone number? What are you wearing? And now it's time for Prius Pimp. The reason I like to drive a Prius is because my girls cannot hear me when I drive up on them. It keeps overhead down too, because I don't use as many fuels that at one time used to be fossils. And I can drive in a carpool lane too, so I can deliver it like 20 minutes or less just like pizza. By the way, you want thin or thick crust? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? One entire week, that is to say seven days of checking up on my biatches, was $3 in gas. Come on. Plus, cops don't expect a pimp in a Prius. Come on. I meet hot moms in the carpool lane, too. There's some upsides, too. I meet some hot moms in the carpool lane. What's up, baby? Yeah? It's changed me driving a Prius. My whole life is different. My perspectives, my circumstances are completely different. Now all my girls have full medical coverage, and I personally inspect each one. Look here, LaQuiva, you're next. (laughs) 
It's Randy's rant. I know this has been said before, but why is it when you stub your little toe, it is enormous pain? It's some sort of oxymoron like a jumbo shrimp or a African-American with a small wiener. This dichotomy, misdirection, oxymoron. Maybe it's New York satire. But why is it when I stub my toe? You want to test your resilience? Do it in front of your daughter, your eight-year-old daughter. You just turn into Yosemite Sam. <laughs> Rat and cratter, frat and crit and fratter, snit and cratter, frackin' fritter, frettin'. You never sound so many words that began with F that weren't the <laughs> F word in your freaking life. And the real irony is, unless you show some real pain, it, everybody around you ignores you. So you're in this dilemma. You never before wanted more sympathy and attention in your life. But the only way to get it was to scream profanities. I mean, I wanted to come up with a combination of the F word and the C word. Some kind of hybrid. That's the kind of pain I was in. I was thinking about stepping on a rake and getting hit in the groin just so it would hurt less. Ladies and gentlemen, Ed Bagel Jr. What is this with the ecosystem, schmeco system? I got an equator right down in my shorts. Oi, you want to know about habitat? Oi, I got hickles in my tsingy. Why should I get on a bicycle? What is this? I got a car. I go, I drive with the zooming and the vidichichel. Ed Bagel Jr. What do I got to recycle? Recycle. Hey, what is this with the... Here's the can. There's the bottle. There's a Mexican in my garbage can. Hey, I got a chichel in my tingy. Ed Bagel Jr. What's with the biodegrading? I'll be biodegrading soon enough. Oi, compost pile. That was the name of my second wife. Ed Bagel Jr. They have a fight hunger bowl and a Chick-fil-A bowl. How about those two get together, have a I just solved the problem bowl. Crustacean information. Did you know that barnacles have the largest penis-to-body ratio in the animal world? That's got to create a little confidence. Yeah, I'm a parasite, but look at my package. It's a jump rope. Let's see how fast a cheetah could run with this thing dangling. That was crustacean information. Witness two spandex-clad men twist themselves into one pretzel. Watch as a glitter-dipped midget gets shot out of a cannon. A show Hollywood gives two thumbs up, way up. Witness Circus So Gay. If you've always been curious, now's the time to experience Circus So Gay. The New York Post gives it four stars, all brown. Circus So Gay, is it in you? I'm beyond vegan, I can't even hang around meat. My friends are meatless, I have toe friends. I am so vegetarian. I don't even have pets. Way too tempting. You only go to a restaurant on the weekends. It gets busy, so they got to start a waiting list. They start calling out names. They say, like, Dufresne, party of two. Table ready for Dufresne, party of two. And if no one answers, they'll say the name again. Dufresne, party of two. But then if no one answers, they'll just go right on to the next name. Bush, party of three. Yeah, but what happened to the Dufresnes? No one seems to care. Who can eat at a time like this? People are missing. You people are selfish. The Dufresnes are in someone's trunk right now with duct tape over their mouth. And they're hungry. That's a triple whammy. We need help. Bush, search party of three. You can eat once you find the Dufresnes. People of Libya, it is me, Muammar Gaddafi. Attention, is this thing on? Testing one, two dissidents. People of Libya, I have decided that you can have freedoms similar to America, such as the following. 
hot and cold running water. People of Libya, we're going to modernize our lives. Everybody gets the new Oprah network. People of Libya, it is me, Momar Gaddafi. I am applying more freedom for you. I'm going to let everybody have a poster of Justin Bieber laminated so you can improve yourselves upon him. People of Libya, I'm going to impart onto you more freedoms than you've ever had before, such as uh, chocolate, uh, dental care, Mexicans, really fat people, bowling alleys, uh, in and out burgers, other slop emporiums such as yeah, beef on a stick, corn dogs, malls, business parks, and uh, Japanese cars. Uh, we are boycotting the Olympics this year, so the javelin toss into a dissident will be cancelled. This is Muammar Gaddafi, signing off. I just want to say to you, uh, lose weight now, ask me how. This episode sponsored by I'm Finally Realizing I'm a Geezer. I don't know. Ouch. I do know I'm a geezer. It's almost like that Foxworthy bit. You know you're a geezer if. You know you're a geezer if you see a high school punk in a food court and he doesn't have just normal earrings like we had when we were growing up. See, here I go already. We had when we were growing up. We had earrings. But what we didn't have was Oreo cookies in each earlobe. And I'm angry, and I'm old. So I, I, the little bit of anger that I have left, because I, I don't have a lot of energy, I, uh, I want to take their mohawk heads and dunk them in milk and see how long their earlobes will stay crunchy. It's almost an insult to both Oreo cookies, which is, should be on the flag, replace the stars with Oreo cookies, and real people from New Guinea. In a gong. That actually have to put stuff in their earlobes to represent some sort of rite of passage. And please, I don't want to sound like I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> what goes on in New Guinea. But I know it goes like this. In a gong. Bunga lady. Douche. This is douche in New Guinean. In a gong. Ding dong. I know I'm old now. And I know I'm old because occasionally, Kimberly, do you have any piercings? No. Because occasionally, uh, it's too bad I didn't already know that. Well, I'll work on that. I, I thought I checked your application carefully <laughs> for uh, piercings. Yeah, you know you're a geezer when you see a kid in the mall and he's got a mohawk and you right away think homohawk because what tribe is he from? <laughs> I am from the Panda Express. <laughs> By the cookies they call Lisa's. You have a mohawk? I think that's Algonquin, if I'm to be dorky enough, but that's an Algonquin look that they stole from a conquered people. Is that your goal? Do you want to look like a conquered people? Is that your swagger? You've seen Forever 21. Now enjoy Forever 81. I never knew there'd be a store for us, but now there is. Now a store just for us. On this continent, even if you're incontinent. Thank you, Forever 81. In my lifetime, I've never seen anything more divisive, more so than politics, religion, sports, gender. I've never seen anyone take a harder line on any other topic than the one I'm about to speak of. I've never seen forces rival, fight, draw a line in the sand like I have when I mention the word Crocs. Either you love them or you hate them. To me, yeah, they look like a lounge chair that got dissected by Edward Scissorhand. Some people, the minute you think of Crocs, they think of what? Lesbians in the garden. No, that's the name of my fourth album. <laughs> no, they think that you are either all gay, lesbian, or at least from the ankles down, you're gay. You're gay. That's my <laughs> Russian friend. I will admit this. I'm coming out of the uh, croc closet. I like crocs a lot. I know. 
a lot of people. I just lost a lot of the few, the proud, click. <laughs> they are hugely comfortable. They are not a message to the world. Um, I'd rather people minded their own business and feet. I don't want my feet to make a statement. I really want them to be ignored. And can I promise you, I ignore your feet. I don't look at people's feet. Don't look at my Crocs. Don't decide who I am, what I do, where I go, because I'm wearing Crocs. Though I am a little shameful of how long I did wear Crocs for. <laughs> I've done a few venues in front of Ferguson, and admittedly, I wore Crocs for a long time. Craig was a hugely, is a hugely um, patient man, almost priest-like, other than the fact that he doesn't diddle young boys, meaning I wasn't young at the time. <laughs> but... He dealt with my pot habit and my crock habit, two things that were not easy on the nose or the eyes. And then one day he snapped, different days on both habits. So I stopped, and I don't think it was asking a lot to, uh, A, uh, don't smoke pot. B, don't wear crocs on stage when people are paying $150 to stare at us. And sometimes it's just, I just need somebody to just go, douche, come here, what do you, look at yourself. <laughs> But the other night when I was uh, opening for Ferguson, we were workshopping at the Works, the Denver Comedy Works. And uh, there was a guy that not only was in Crocs, but he was in like pea stained sweats. And he was wearing those like cancer bracelets. I think they give you cancer. And he was wearing a gravy stained T-shirt. And he had like one man breast. And the other one was just too saggy to even <laughs> come out. And so I had to hammer that guy. I mean, he was a mess. I mean, he was just head to toe, couch potato. He looked like he had bed sores or couch sores from just turning and turning during Madden. So anyways, I just want to say to, I'm not a croc person. I'm just a person who occasionally wears crocs because they feel good on my feet. If it's wet out, don't wear crocs. You'll kill yourself. If it's not, it'll save you back pain, front pain, and even side pain. Take that, foot judgers. Yo, listen, how come I go to Thunder Down Under and I don't see no brothers? Are you tired of the lack of flavor in Thunder Down Under? Are you sick of the brotherless love? Now enjoy something just for us. Chocolate Thunder Down Under. Chocolate Thunder Down Under. Mmm, mmm, good. Well, this was our fifth show, and I'm very proud of that because there's really no reason for me to do this show except that I consider it like an itch that I have to scratch. So if you enjoy what I'm doing, that's a good thing because right now I'm very, very itchy. So we'll see how long it goes on for, but if you are listening, I appreciate it. Put me in the car and put me on your MP3 and get on your Stairmaster and get into the gym and take long walks and put me in your ear, put me in your nose, put me in your throat. Because uh, we're commercial-free, baby. Do you know retired pirates join AARG? Arg, Walker the Plank. My grandkids don't call me anymore. Here's Lewis Black as a pirate. Arg. You've seen the Ford Fiesta. You've driven the Chevy Cilantro. Now the ultimate in chick mobiles, 2011 Volvo. Zero to 60, depending on mood. Well, this was our fifth show, and I'm very proud of that because there's really no reason for me to do this show except that I consider it like an itch that I have to scratch. So if you enjoy what I'm doing, that's a good thing. Because right now I'm very, very itchy. So we'll see how long it goes on for. But if you are listening, I appreciate it. Put me in the car and put me on your MP3 and get on your Stairmaster and get into the gym and take long walks and put me in your ear, put me in your nose, put me in your throat. Because uh, we're commercial free, baby. And uh, we're also free. So I promise you, our motto at the Randy Kagan Show is you'll get your money's worth. Uh, I'll talk to you next week. Adios.
the Jaguar company now pronounces its car Jaguar, which makes me sound like a Jaguar. I went to Walgreens to get a flu shot. How was I supposed to know I'm not supposed to take my pants down on aisle nine? <laughs>